when you think of Josh Hamilton, you may think of amazing hitting, an incredible home run derby, or chronic drug issues. But Hamilton was one of the best hitters in his prime and has a wild story to go along with it. So let's talk about it. Born and raised in North Carolina, Josh Hamilton was a high school standout. He hit 529 with 13 home runs, 35 RBIs, and 20 stolen bases in 25 games. Him, along with Josh Beckett out of Texas, were considered the top two prospects of the 1999 MLB Draft. The Tampa Bay Devil Rays selected Hamilton first overall, and he signed, receiving a $3.96 million signing bonus. His career got off to a great start as he was voted Minor League Player of the Year in 2000 by USA Today. But unfortunately, prior to the 2001 season, Hamilton and his parents were involved in an automobile accident where all three suffered injuries, which they eventually recovered from. But Hamilton's was a little more serious as he hurt his back, and this was really the beginning of his alcohol and drug abuse. The story goes that with his time off, Hamilton began getting a lot more tattoos, and apparently he became very close with his tattoo artist, which was a big partier himself, and the two started partying together, which led Hamilton to go down the wrong path. Now, I'm not telling you not to get tattoos. <laughs> I'm not saying it's this guy, that guy's fault. Everyone makes decisions on their own, but doing a lot of research, this is kind of what I've found to be the beginning of it for him and one of the bigger influences. So take it as you wish. In 2002, Hamilton had 44 RBIs in 56 games before his season came to an end due to a lingering toe, back, and neck injury. The Devil Rays began to notice a change in his behavior and reacted by sending him to a drug rehab center in California. In spring training of 2003, Josh failed his first drug test and showed up late several times. This resulted in him being sent back down to the minors, where he would constantly disappear, then reappear, eventually taking the rest of the season off for personal reasons, hoping to return for spring training with the Devil Rays in 2004. But unfortunately, he was suspended for 30 days and fined for violating MLB's anti-drug policy once again, and a month later, he was suspended for the entire season for two more failed tests. Hamilton attempted a comeback in 2005 after missing almost three years of playing time, but he found trouble once again prior to the season, when he was arrested for smashing the windshield of a friend's truck. The Rays placed him on the restricted list, which removed him from the 40-man roster. And during this time, Hamilton relapsed, and the MLB suspended him for the entire 2006 season. This was basically the first official fall of Hamilton's career. Once extremely promising first overall pick, now another season in suspension. But it was during this time that Hamilton began to fix his life, with the help of many, many people. Most notably, former minor league outfielder and manager Roy Silver, who owned a baseball academy in Florida, Silver made a deal with Josh that allowed him to train at the facility if he agreed to work there. Hamilton would clean bathrooms, rake the infield, and even slept on an air mattress in one of the facility's offices. He was reinstated in June of 2006, but no teams were interested. The Rays even left him off their 40-man roster, and Hamilton was selected third overall in the Rule 5 draft by the Chicago Cubs, who immediately traded him to the Reds for $100,000 in cash, 50 for his rights, and 50 for the cost of the draft. For those of you that aren't too familiar, the Rule 5 draft is basically this, and it gave Hamilton a second chance with baseball. In spring training of the 2007 season, Hamilton was one of the best hitters and he earned a roster spot. And on April 2nd, at age 25, he made his very long awaited MLB debut against the Cubs in a seventh inning pinch hit appearance where he received a 22 second standing ovation from the crowd. His first MLB start came on April 10th where he batted leadoff. He hit a home run that night and another the next night playing well enough to earn NL Rookie of the Month honors in the month of April. He dealt with some minor injuries throughout the season, limiting him to only 90 games where he hit 292 with 19 home runs, 47 RBIs, and 17 doubles. And in December of that offseason, Hamilton was on the move again, being traded to the Texas Rangers for Edison Volquez and Danny Herrera. In 2008, after another tremendous spring training, Hamilton was named the starting center fielder for the rebuilding Rangers. His prowess carried over to the regular season as he hit 330 with 32 RBIs in the month of April. His hot bat would continue as he won player of the month for April 
and May, and eventually was selected to his first All-Star game as a starter in the 2008 season. Making the All-Star game as a starter was an incredible accomplishment, but what he did the night before in the Home Run Derby might have been his greatest feat. On that July summer night at Old Yankee Stadium, the house that Babe built, he hit a staggering 28 home runs in round one and 35 total. Ironically, he did lose out to Justin Morneau in the final round, but at one point, he hit 13 straight dingers and one that traveled 518 feet. He would go on to close out the regular season strong, playing in 156 games, hitting 304 with 32 home runs, 130 RBIs, winning the Silver Slugger, and finishing 7th in MVP voting. Unfortunately, the Rangers only won 79 games though, as they were a couple years away from contending. In 2009, Hamilton had officially arrived and expectations were higher than ever. He had another solid spring training as well, leading all players with 27 RBIs. But he battled rib cage and abdominal injuries through most of the year, playing in only 89 total games. But even in limited playing time, Hamilton was such a fan favorite that he was voted to his second straight All-Star game. The Rangers unfortunately missed the playoffs again, but they did improve their win total to 87. And the key for them now was to just stay healthy. In 2010, at age 29, Hamilton was in his physical prime and he had moved from center field to left field to begin the season. By the All-Star break, he was hitting 346 with 22 home runs and 64 RBIs and was voted to his third straight All-Star game. On August 27th, he set the Rangers record for three hit games with 24. But about a week later, he bruised his rib cage, making a leaping catch into the outfield wall and missed almost a month. He returned with three games left in the regular season, hitting a home run and the Rangers were ready to make a serious playoff run. The team won 90 games and the AL West crown, drawing Hamilton's former team, the team that drafted him number one overall many years ago, the Tampa Bay Rays in the ALDS. In a tightly contested series that went to the decisive fifth game, Hamilton was really a non-factor. He hit two for 18 with only one RBI, but the Rangers advanced to the championship series thanks in large part to Cliff Lee, who dominated in games one and five, including a one-run complete game to clinch it. They went up against the defending World Series champion Yankees in the ALCS, and Hamilton put together the best postseason series of his career. The Rangers slipped in game one, but took four of the next five to advance to the World Series. Hamilton batted 350 with four home runs and seven RBIs, earning the ALCS MVP award. And their final test would be the San Francisco Giants. It was the Rangers' first World Series appearance in franchise history, and the Giants were looking to win their first title since 1954. Unfortunately for Hamilton, his hot bat went cold, and the Giants disposed of the Rangers in five games. Hamilton batted only two for 20 with one home run and one RBI in the series, but Josh was awarded for a tremendous regular season with the AL MVP award, AL batting title, Silver Slugger, and Player's Choice of AL's Most Outstanding Player in 2010. His final stat line was 359 with 32 home runs, 100 RBIs, 40 doubles, 8.7 war, and a 1.044 OPS in 133 games played. In 2011, fresh off an MVP season, Hamilton avoided arbitration signing a two-year, $24 million deal entering his age 30 season. Cliff Lee joined the Phillies in free agency, which was a big blow, but the team added Adrian Beltre and were ready to compete again with the main core in place. Unfortunately for Hamilton, he fractured his right humerus on a play at the plate early in April, causing him to miss a little over a month. He returned May 23rd and went two for four, hitting his first homer of the year. Hamilton was voted again by the fans to his fourth straight All-Star game, hitting 301 with 11 home runs and 49 RBIs at the break. He finished the regular season with a 298 average, 25 home runs, 94 RBIs, and 31 doubles in 121 games. The Rangers, starting to look like a juggernaut, won 96 games and the AL West crown. And for the second year in a row, they played the Tampa Bay Rays and the ALDS. But Hamilton, once again, didn't hit too great. This time was a slightly better, going 4 for 15 with a double and two RBIs, but the Rangers were able to dispose of Tampa in four games. The ALCS was a meeting with the 95-win Detroit Tigers that stretched to six games. Once again, though, in the ALCS, Hamilton hit well. He batted 308 with four doubles and five RBIs as Texas advanced to their second straight World Series. 
This year's matchup was with the 90-win underdog Cardinals, who narrowly squeezed into the postseason. The Rangers were definitely the favorite, but lost Game 1 to the surprise of some. Texas fought back and eventually took a 3-2 series lead, but couldn't close the door on what turned out to be an epic World Series. Led by David Freeze, the Cardinals made a historic comeback in Game 6 and finished it off in Game 7. Hamilton was decent, hitting 7 of 29 with 1 home run and 6 RBIs along with 2 doubles, but it was an absolutely devastating loss to the franchise and one that will certainly never be forgotten. But in 2012, Hamilton and the Rangers came out hot. Josh won April's Player of the Month, hitting 395 with 9 home runs and 25 RBIs. And on May 8th, Hamilton put together one of the best hitting performances ever, going 5 for 5 with 4 home runs and 8 RBIs in a 10-3 victory over the Baltimore Orioles. Hamilton was selected to his 5th straight All-Star game, setting the record for most votes, gathering 11 million which stood until 2015. He was hitting 308 with 27 home runs and 75 RBIs at the break and the Rangers had a 52-34 and record. Hamilton had his struggles in the second half of the season, but he put together great numbers overall. He hit 285 with 43 home runs, 128 RBIs, and 31 doubles in 148 games, finishing fifth in MVP voting and winning his third Silver Slugger award. The Rangers won 93 games and played the Orioles in the first ever winner-takes-all wildcard game. Hamilton went hitless, batting 0 for 4, and the Rangers lost by a score of 5 to 1. In the offseason, Hamilton signed with the Los Angeles Angels on a five-year, $125 million deal at age 32. It was a sad ending to an incredible five years with the Texas Rangers, where during that time frame, Hamilton averaged 28 home runs, 101 RBIs, a 305 batting average, 31 doubles, a .912 OPS, along with five All-Star games and an MVP award. This player, unfortunately, was not the one that the Angels thought they were getting. Hamilton struggled in his first season in LA, hitting 250 with 21 home runs, 79 RBIs, and 32 doubles in 151 games, and the team struggled as well, dropping their win total from 89 to 78. His dramatic decline would continue in 2014, playing in only 89 games, hitting 263 with 10 home runs, 44 RBIs, and 21 doubles but the team improved its win total to 98 and hosted the Kansas City Royals in the ALDS. Hamilton was atrocious in three games going 0 for 13 and the Angels were swept by the eventual American League champions. Things continued to get worse for Josh and in February of 2015, Hamilton had off-season shoulder surgery and relapsed during his recovery, but he never failed a drug test and voluntarily informed the league of his relapse. So he was never suspended, but Angel's ownership was extremely unhappy with him and did not want Josh back on the roster. And on April 27, 2015, he was traded back to Arlington, Texas for cash and a player to be named later. Josh was called up on May 24th, and on May 28th, he returned to Texas as a Ranger for the first time since 2012, receiving a standing ovation from the crowd. He proceeded to hit a double on the first pitch he saw and went 2 for 4 with the team's only RBI in a 5-1 loss. He went on to play in 50 games, hitting 253 with 8 home runs and 25 RBIs, along with 8 doubles as the Rangers won 88 games and the AL West title. They matched up with the Toronto Blue Jays in a wild series that went the full 5 games. Hamilton struggled going 3 for 18 with 1 double and no runs batted in as the Rangers blew a 2-0 series lead and a one-run lead late in Game 5, which you all may remember what happened here. The Rangers were eliminated, but I guess on the bright side for Hamilton, he snapped a 0-for-31 postseason hitless streak that was second most all-time. This turned out to be the last MLB game of Josh Hamilton's career, as he battled knee injuries the next two seasons and never took another at-bat. Eventually being released by the Texas Rangers, his career was over. But unfortunately, his fall would continue. On October 2019, he was arrested and charged with injury to a child, a third degree felony, after being accused of physically assaulting his daughter. And in April of 2020, he was indicted on a felony charge for beating his daughter. If convicted, he may face up to 10 years in prison. 
a real sour and disgusting way to end a stellar prime and an amazing comeback story. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care.